Bosco Bites, brought to you from Don Bosco Youth Services, Episode 1, Part 10. Don Bosco meets Michael Rua, the first successor of Don Bosco. This is his story. Michael Rua was born in Turin on the 9th of June, 1837. He was the last of nine children. His father worked in an ammunition center and unfortunately died when Michael was barely eight years old. Michael too would have joined this ammunition factory, but thanks to Don Bosco, in 1852, he met Don Bosco. In 1845, on every Saturday, Don Bosco would go to the Institute of the Christian Brothers and there he would listen to their confession. He would be with them for an hour. And this continued for a few years till 1851. Every Saturday Don Bosco would play with them. He would, he would create in them a desire to frequent the sacraments, especially to make their confession. Among one of those boys was Michael Rua. Later he narrates, he says, how every time Don Bosco came to celebrate Mass or sometimes to preach, there would be a commotion in, in, the, in the chapel. They would be, it would be like an electric shock. The boys would all get up and run to him to hold on to his hand, to kiss his hand. It took some time for Don Bosco to reach the sacristy. He would often say that when other priests came to the institute to listen to their confession, many of these priests would have nothing to do because all the boys would want to go to Don Bosco to make their confession, to disclose their innermost thoughts. So, how did Michael Rua meet Don Bosco? What prompted him to love this priest so much? It is August of 1845. A friend of Michael told him that there was a priest who had organized an oratory and Michael was enticed by this story and so together with two other boys they ran to the refugio. But in those days Don Bosco had already moved on, had moved the auditory to the city mills. The two little boys ran there. They were warmly welcomed by Don Bosco. Over the next three years Michael frequented the auditory but not so often. But Don Bosco never lost sight of him. Don Bosco understood that Michael was rich in spiritual gifts and that he would be the right person to carry on the mission of the Salesian congregation that Don Bosco had already planned. There is an interesting story in the life of young Michael. One day Don Bosco was giving out medals and Michael who was late and was standing at the end of the line thought he heard Don Bosco say to him take Michael take take one the priest stood there but didn't give him anything he only kept making a sign his palm reached out and as if to divide his palm into half and this is what Don Bosco said Michael you and I will henceforth go halves in everything henceforth you and I will go halves in everything and that is what it turned out to be. Michael went on to become the founder's close friend and associate. He was among the first few with whom Don Bosco shared the idea of forming a Salesian congregation. The order was later called St. Francis of Sales who had a genius for converting souls through kindness and persuasion. When Michael was completing his elementary course at the Institute of the Christian Brothers, one of his teachers, a religious, suggested to the young Michael to enter their congregation, the Christian Brothers. Michael was a little undecided and so he promised the teacher, he said, next year if you are here teaching, I will definitely join you. Michael lived in the Valdoko district, close to Don Bosco's oratory. And since the oratory was near, Michael slowly began to frequent the oratory on weekends. When school closed, Don Bosco, aware of the boy's potentialities, asked him if he would like to become a priest. And in the meantime, Michael's teacher was transferred from the Christian Brothers Institute. 
Michael took this as a sign from God and he asked Don Bosco, I would love to be with you. Don Bosco turned to him and said, would you love to become a priest? Oh yes, that is my desire. That is something I love very much. Very well, said Don Bosco. Then you start studying Latin. One day, a friend of Michael confided to Michael Ruhr as they were on the way to the oratory, the words that his teacher had told Don Bosco. And what were these words? He said, Don Bosco has great plans for you and that someday you will be of great help for him. Michael listened attentively and never forgot those words. That did not distract him from his studies. He passed his final examinations brilliantly. While Michael would study, he would also spend his time with the other senior boys teaching catechism. And that's what he did for a few years. Don Bosco had in his oratory boys of all types. They were urchins. They were, they were runaways from home. They were orphans. They were youngsters who had lost their faith. But Don Bosco used this as an opportunity to teach them, to educate them, and also to educate them in their faith. And the young Michael Ruhr was there already at a young age, helping Don Bosco in this mission. On the evening of January 26th, 1854, Michael Ruhr participated in the first reunion of what would be the origin of the Salesian congregation. Five years later, Don Bosco would name him the spiritual director of the Salesian congregation that he had just started. He had become a priest in 1860. 1863, Don Bosco appointed the young Michael Ruhr, barely 29 years old, as the rector of the little seminary at Mirabello. And he sent him there and he said, go and be Don Bosco there. And that's exactly what Michael Ruhr did. All through his life, wherever he went, he became a Don Bosco there. We are told that he imitated Don Bosco in everything except in his voice. In 1884, Pope Leo XIII appointed Michael as Don Bosco's vicar. And in 1888, he became the first rector major of the Salesian congregation. At the death of Don Bosco, there were only 64 houses. But during the years in which Michael Ruhr became the rector major for 22 long years, the numbers increased tremendously. New foundations were started in Switzerland, in Colombia, in Belgium, in Algeria, in Palestine, in Mexico, in Portugal, in Venezuela, in Peru, Austria, Tunisia, Bolivia, Egypt, Paraguay, North America, Turkey. In 1972, he was declared blessed. Don Bosco was right when he frequently spoke of Michael Ruhr, he said, if God had given, if God had said to me, choose a boy endowed with all these virtues and talents that you would like him to have, and I'll give him to you, I would never have imagined anyone as gifted as Father Michael Ruhr. Michael Ruhr was barely 17 when he was among the first Salesians and was inspired by Don Bosco's example. He spent his days at the youth club, morning and evening classes, supervising them in theater, in music rehearsals, in gymnastics, in lively outdoor games, solitary study, along with frequent reception of the sacraments. Michael Ruhr would later say, I got much more from observing Don Bosco even in the humblest of actions than from reading and meditating on a treatise on asceticism. Another interesting story, we are in July 1868. Michael Ruhr's constant activity got the better of him and he was confined to bed. The doctors gave him, in fact, a few hours to live. And Don Bosco walked into the room and said, Listen, Don Rua, even if I were to throw you out of this window, just as you are, I assure you that you will not die. A few days later, 
Despite the doctor's prognosis, Michael Rua recovered. He lived on for another 42 years with Don Bosco and after that. Don Rua died on the 6th of April 1910 at the age of 73. The congregation had grown from 773 Salesians to over 4,000 Salesians, from 57 institutions to 345 communities, from 6 to 34 provinces in 33 countries. On the 29th of October 1972, Pope Paul VI declared him beatified. His body is venerated in the crypt of the Basilica of Mary Help of Christians at Valdoco in Turin. My dear friends, it's a very simple story, but God has plans for each one of us. And God seems to bring right people at the right moment, at the right time into our lives. Is God calling you at this moment, at the right time, to be at the right place? We are surrounded by so many of them who are desperate, who are in need, who are orphans, who are migrants, who are in search of employment, of education, of spiritual nourishment. And like Don Bosco, you and I are called to go halves with the young people of today. Young people have much to offer while we offer them so much. They have so much to offer us. Divine intervention and human cooperation have to have a meeting point in our, in our every encounter with the young. My dear Salesians, my dear past pupils, my dear Salesian cooperators, my dear young people, God is calling you to intervene in the lives of young people, to go halves with them. They too want to go halves with you. The young people want to share in our charism. Young people want to be part of Don Bosco's mission and we want to be part of the young people's lives. This is the interplay. We walk into their lives and they walk into our lives. Both are God-given and this is the great calling. Open your hearts, open your minds, open your homes, open your life to allow young people to walk into it. May God bless you.